practice and you're all very welcome. Okay, so I'm going to now hand you over to uh, the CEO of the Irish Hospice Foundation, Sharon Foley. Sharon, you're on mute. You would think after two years that I would have learned this. Good morning, all. You are so very welcome here this morning and delighted to see such wonderful, wonderful attendance. And, and really, as we're coming out of COVID, we, we remember that COVID-19 has brought so many things into the spotlight. And among those is that very profound impact of grief we've all experienced through the pandemic, especially now as employees return to the workplace. And we've just completed a national survey called Time to Reflect, and we're seeing that story come back again and again from, from people all over Ireland. So you're very welcome today to take the time out to focus on grief in, in the workplace. And we know grief is a very difficult topic. It's very painful. It evokes many different meanings and experiences of people, and it takes a lot of courage to raise it in the workplace. So I'm in post, I think about 10 and a half years, and I still find it difficult, and I still find it hard to talk about grief in the workplace. But we know that it's something that employees are impacted by, but it is an awkward and difficult area to discuss. So thank you for coming today to the webinar and for taking that leap and for being willing to open up that discussion about grief and bereavement in the workplace. So well done, you guys. We have been pioneering the area of grief in the workplace for over 15 years, and we're, we're, we're very lucky to the skills of Refina Guinness, but also Orla Keegan, who's there with us today, Catherine Tierney, and all of the bereavement team who really lend their, their time and expertise and support. But I know Brefney has been really plowing at this for so many years, and we're very, very proud of all that he has and that we have achieved. And we've seen that work evolve over the years. For example, our work in developing bereavement policy has been adapted and incorporated by the civil service in Ireland and ACAS in the UK. And even last night with my own board, we just ad adopted a new workplace policy that recognises the profound impact of grief and somebody's capacity to engage in the workplace. And that's something we all have to recognise. We've all known it as a human level, but it's really important it's reflected at a policy level as well. So since then, we've seen bereavement and grief rise in our consciousness and no more so through COVID-19. So when Cheryl Sandberg's husband died, she really led a worldwide conversation on grief and workplaces and radically changed face Facebook's bereavement policy, and that has had an impact, an impact on all of us. We've all been looking at those policies and seeing how we can adapt. I think, my, is my sound going funny there, Brefney? Um, so workplaces have a responsibility to get real about bereavement supports for employees. And if we're in ser serious about employee well-being, and every CEO that I know at the moment is getting very serious about employee well-being, we need to get serious about grief in the workplace. So when it comes to bereavement support, employees have said that the most important thing they want from their employer is compassion. And that comes from research that we developed in 2018. Often workplaces do not think about employee grief until something happens, the death of some of an employee or a death of somebody close. And I know, and many of you around uh, the, the, the webinar today will know what it is when, when you hear the news and you think, what on earth do I do? What, what, what do I do next? What do I do? How do I show leadership here as the CEO? In the same research, only three out of 10 employees knew if their employer had a bereavement policy. These e-learning courses today that you're going to, 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 to see and, and, and get a taste of will provide a compass and practical support for owners and managers and CEOs to think about what their organizations may do to support brief employees and how it can respond. Grief has many dynamics and each of us will have our own unique experience of it, but it's important to have a base standard of support, which each employee is able to access to ensure the well-being at a time of challenge. I took the time out to do Brefney's uh, employee, the manager course, and even after 10 and a half years as CEO of the Irish Hospice Foundation, I learned a huge amount. They're really simple. They're really easy to access. They're really, I suppose, thought provoking as well. So having these conversations in our workplace can help ensure that employees who are grieving will be met with the compassion and competence that matters most at a difficult time. So there's my few words for myself. I wanted to, to, to start the, 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 and open up the proceedings today to, to introduce you to the man himself, Brefney McGuinness, who really has been a pioneering force in developing these e-learning courses. So over to you, Brefney. You're on mute, Brett. I'm think. on mute, yeah. I still haven't learned. Uh, thanks very much, Sharon. And uh, uh, welcome to all of you who are joining us here today. Um, we're very uh, glad to have you along with us. And I would encourage you, if you have questions as we go through um, uh, the, the, the short launch, uh, 
different speakers will be speaking about different things. You may have a question in relation to your own workplace or in relation to these e-learning courses or some other aspect of grief in the workplace. And I would encourage you to put those questions into the question and answer uh, box and we will do our best to uh, gather those together. We'll have some time at the end to answer those questions. So I'm going to begin um, by uh, just, whoops, getting my slides right if I can, uh, by just doing a short presentation on what these e-learning courses are. And uh, as Sharon was saying, uh, we're aware very much at the moment of grief and particularly as employees are coming back to work. I suppose the basic point in the Irish Hospice Foundation is thinking about the workplace as a community. Uh, and that's a community which can have a significant impact in a positive way for people when they are grieving. The Grief in the Workplace program is the way that we um, address this, uh, and that is a program whereby we work with employers and employees to ensure that uh, employees who are bereaved are supported appropriately in their workplaces, wherever that is. And it involves a suite of activities and interventions which aim to help workplaces effectively support employees who are bereaved. It's based on research, it's based on best practice. And I suppose what we're seeing here today and what we're launching is one part of that program. It's based on research and in 2018, Sharon alluded to this, uh, we did research with Morok uh, on people who, employees who were bereaved. And the standout uh, piece from that was that 75% said when they're bereaved what they want most from their employer is compassion if you take nothing else away from today that would be one of the most important things to remember um, and we were chatting a little bit earlier just before we started the um, webinar here uh, and, and Joyce was saying from CIPD it's actually the, the human connection that makes a big difference in bereavement and that is so true um, interestingly uh, what came last in that survey was people having their privacy respected so it was it was further down the list and that's interesting because often we might hold back from saying something to somebody because we might feel we don't want to impose or we don't want to make them worse but actually what people really want most is for people to reach out to engage with them also as Sharon has said only three in ten adults who are employed knew if their uh, employer had a bereavement policy. That doesn't mean that employers don't have a bereavement policy, but the staff didn't know about it. And that I suppose is another area to keep an eye on. So what are we launching today? We're launching four e-learning courses, and these are designed um, to address four areas. Firstly, it's coping with grief for managers, and that's to empower managers to be able to uh, engage in conversations with staff, with employees, with workers around grief, to give a framework to uh, know how to respond. The second course is coping with grief for staff, and that's aimed at staff who want to learn about grief, but also want to learn about how to support their colleagues or indeed people in their own families uh, or friends. The third course is developing a bereavement policy for HR professionals. So this again looks at that area of, well, look, what do I put into a policy? What are the areas that I need to think about? And in that course, we provide a number of uh, templates uh, which can be used, one of which, believe it or not, is uh, a template from the Department of Foreign Affairs, which uh, they have developed and which uh, we're very proud to say we've been involved in, but it, it's largely credit is due to them. And it's a, a gold standard in terms of bereavement policy. Lastly, we have, uh, again, a, a rather difficult topic, uh, and that's where suicide visits the workplace. We hope this never happens, but unfortunately, the reality is that it does. And when it does, uh, this course is designed to equip uh, managers, CEOs uh, and owners in terms of, look, how do I respond to this? What are the things that I need to do? And there are practical steps in there uh, to help um, navigate what can be a very challenging situation. Um, these courses were developed um, through uh, the work of one of our uh, uh, staff here, uh, and that's our educationist, Dr. Ashling Navelle, who's done tremendous work in developing these. Uh, we tendered uh, to develop the courses. We um, also were very grateful for some funding from Comic Relief. Um, and Cobblestone Learning were the company which won the tender, and they have done an excellent job uh, in translating what can be very difficult topics into really practical, easy to use formats. 
So just in terms of the timing, the coping with grief for staff is approximately 40 minutes long. Coping with grief for managers is approximately 50 minutes. The developing a bereavement policy for HR professionals is approximately 65 minutes. And the responding to suicide uh, for senior managers is approximately 70 minutes. I'm just going to give you a short flavor of um, what is in one of these courses. This is the grief at work for, or the coping with grief for managers. And the audience, it's suitable for managers, human resource personnel, and anyone with a supportive role in an organization who wants to learn about how grief can impact on staff and how to provide effective support. Just to give you a sample of the learning outcomes, um, so what will you get from this? You'll understand how grief can impact on staff, especially as a result of COVID-19. Uh, acknowledging the role of the manager in supporting staff, understanding what the normal grieving process involves. And that can be really helpful as a framework for how I might intervene or not intervene. Know how to provide basic support to a staff member. Uh, and we use a, a, an idea of bereavement first aid. It's a simple three-step process of acknowledging, validating, and supporting. Really simple, but a good framework to, to work from. And we also look at how to take care of yourself when supporting somebody who is grieving. So we're going to have a little look, brief look at the work. Sorry about that. Excuse me. I'll get my slides back up. We're going to have a brief look at what some of the content looks like. This is a short snapshot of that to give you an idea of what is involved. The workplace and grief. Grief is often a taboo topic in the workplace and can be difficult to talk about. Whether you are the one who is bereaved or you are supporting a colleague who is grieving, it is useful for everyone to learn about grief, recognize how it can impact on people and know how to respond. In all types of workplaces, support for staff who are grieving is a key element of staff well-being. So uh, again, I put this in here because this is another uh, really important part of the work that we do in the Irish Hospice Foundation and particularly in the bereavement department. Um, it's a bereavement support line. This is a free resource which is open and available to you and your company and your organization. And again, just in case you might have been impacted or affected by anything that we're going to talk about or we are talking about today, just to keep an eye on that. It's a useful resource. Uh, they're excellent people who are staffing that. Uh, and it's a good thing to have have there for you in the workplace. Um, I'm finally going to say where you can find these e-learning courses. Uh, the website is uh, https elearning.hospicefoundation.ie and we'll be putting this into the chat function there. So without further ado, I am going to stop there and I'm going to, uh, I suppose, uh, bring us into the, the practical piece of what this means in somebody's life. And I'm going to introduce you to two people. The first is, um, sorry, <laughs> uh, sorry about this, Jennifer uh, Hughes. Um, and Jennifer's mum uh, died during COVID-19. Uh, Jennifer was working remotely. And Jennifer's going to uh, talk to us a little bit about her experience, her workplace, uh, provided uh, and reached out to her in her grief and provided a um, an intervention for her and other members of staff who were bereaved. She's going to say a little bit about that. And then I'm going to introduce Barry Holmes from the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland. He's the human resource director there to respond to that and, and to give an idea of what it's like from a human resource director's point of view. So uh, Jennifer, apologies for getting your game. I had a brain freeze there. Um, so over to you. Great, I'm sorry the, the time was going on and off there, the mute chambers. Um, this was a big, so, um, Jennifer, I'm sorry, if you could just lean in, your sound is going a little bit there. Oh, is it? Okay, okay. And I might just turn it up a bit as well. Um, that's that's perfect. Yeah, lovely. Uh, yeah, lovely. So, so Murphy, sorry, just guiding on the question again. So the question um, is, I, I suppose your mum, Patricia, died yeah. during COVID. You were working remotely and your organisation yeah. reached out to you uh, in terms of providing support. Uh, and that was provided over um, uh, a period of uh, four couple sessions, of a couple of months. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I suppose, yeah. just to give people a sense of how what that experience was like for you, particularly uh, in, in the vulnerable time when your mum died and how the, the organisation supporting you helped you. No, absolutely, Brefni, yeah. Um, it was great because um, 
like I'm in an organization where there's 3,000 staff, so it's quite big. And this intervention involved about nine of us signed up, up to it, about, but about six to seven of us, well, seven initially, but six stayed with it, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So you got a chance with your very good self to, to get to know these six people who we were all experiencing grief together of somebody significant, obviously each story so unique. And um, the intervention was like, as, as I was saying, it was only six hours if you counted it up in terms of hours and minutes. So it was an hour and a half, once a fortnight for like two months, kind of for April and May. Um, and like, it was extraordinary because, you know, I wouldn't have met, I wouldn't have had a chance to meet any of those participants before, funny enough. I, I knew one of them to see, and that was it. And so we got to, I suppose, share something quite profound, you know, um, losing someone in the pandemic added to it because say, like in my case, my mom, Patricia was in a nursing home and it was a real rolling news as we were all in with, you know, will I actually get in to visit? Will I be allowed in or will I will I reach a roadblock where it's too dangerous with the COVID? And so all that uncertainty kind of heightened things. Um, I was fortunate in the last week of her life, myself and my brother did get in and we literally had a kind of a, a deathbed vigil going on for a week. But, you know, in, in all the sharings, you know, other people, they had their loved one in a hospital and they couldn't get in or they were trying to talk to them through glass and, you know, so so even within the pandemic, you know, the stories vary quite a lot. So so um, I mean, it was so well structured, your course, Breffney, and like you're such an excellent facilitator. You know, you just you just made it so safe for us all. You know, we were literally strangers meeting on that first session and it was raw. The first session it was a fair bit of tears and Kleenex and everything at the ready. Um, but I just felt like just felt our humanity was honoured, you know, because you do bring your whole self to work, you know. Sorry, yeah. yeah. No, that's and great. And uh, again, I did uh, that uh, session, those sessions were, were organised by your workplace and it was their awareness yeah. around the well-being needs of their employees uh, that prompted yeah. them to do that. And I, I suppose that's what we're looking at today is kind of raising that awareness for employers that look, uh, when employees are bereaved, it's good to respond to that. Can I ask Absolutely. you, Jennifer, just yeah. maybe as a, a final point there, um, what what difference did that make to you in terms of your uh, kind of sense of uh, belonging to the employer and, and your commitment to your work in that? No, abs um, it, massive, a massive difference. It, it, was, it was like a shot in the arm. It was like a turbocharge. It, it really strengthened your, your, my sense of belonging. Um, you know, because like, I suppose I'm in the organization 22 years, I know other people may be less than that, but, you know, in, over the life cycle of an employee, you're going to have dips and peaks in life, you know, and, and your energy could be up or down, but, but as soon as you're sort of, and it doesn't have to be too big, like as I said, it was six hours over two months, but, it, but as, as soon as you're sort of whole sense, and we're, we're always saying bring your whole self to, to work, that, as soon as that's honoured, it almost frees up that energy that's a little bit blocked and, do you know, dealing with the sadness because it's yeah. almost like it's get given permission, it's given an outlet, but it's not inappropriate or anything, you know, because in a weird way, it's almost like you get a chance to sort of exercise that and, and get it out a bit. And then actually you go into your next bit of work really energised. So I absolutely think it's a win-win. It's a win for the employer and it's a win for, the, for us, the employees. Thanks very much, Jennifer. Uh, we, we'll come back maybe to some more of those points a little bit later, but that, sure. that's fantastic. Barry, if I could bring you in there and maybe just your own response as a human resource director, uh, and again, in, in terms of uh, how you see it and, and the value of uh, responding to employees who are bereaved. Yeah, thanks, Breffney, and thanks, uh, Jennifer, for, for being so open in terms of sharing your perspective there. I mean, it's, it's interesting, just Breffney, you know, you hear a lot of HR organizations are changing their names. I mean, I think it's really important now more than ever that human resources is actually, that that humanity is is actually core to what um, what we're all about. And we're all human beings at the end of the day. And I think what's really uh, um of value to me, I suppose, is the fact that the courses that you've produced are evidence-based. I would say that in, a, in an organization that prides itself in its research. Um, but I think it's really compelling that the, the courses that you've you've pulled together, which are, are very, 
um, short, sharp, bite-sized, um, easily digestible, user-friendly. You know, I've had a look through them and, and they're excellent. So great credit to you and the team in, in terms of their production. I mean, I for me, there's kind of a couple of things that sort of strike me as a, as a sort of a HR person when I hear this, um, this topic and um, that I think it means different things to different people. And sometimes uh, managers and, and people leaders get the heebie-jeebies if they haven't dealt with it before. So there's kind of this sense of confidence in their ability to be able to deal with it um and what they say what they what they don't say um and effectively i suppose recognizing the fact that you know there are some managers who do this very well and, and naturally and others that don't and i think what we have to do is try and uh, bring this conversation into its wider construct in terms of well-being so so and i think uh, sharon your ceo mentioned that at the outset that i think this is part and parcel of well-being and um and, and where someone is bereaved, and I, I know from the conversations briefly that we've had before, I think the, the use of language is really important, um, you know, that, that this is part of life. And, you know, if, if, if for no other reason than over the last two years that people's work life and personal lives have become much more blurred. And hence, I think as they return to the workplace, the physical workplace, that sense of how uh, one deals with issues of this nature and how you can support your colleagues through a difficult time um, is, 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 is really important. Um, so so I, think, I, I think viewing this and framing this in the context of well-being, I think, is really important. And that's how, how, how we view it in, in RCSI. And also recognizing that it's part of um, a, a bank of skills that a manager needs to be able to develop over time and we need to support them um, in, in that regard. Um, because I think the last thing any manager wants to do or any person in an organization wants to do is to say the wrong thing. I think people are people will come at this from a, with a positive intent, but the impact of maybe how they engage uh, may be inconsistent uh, based on how a particular individual is feeling in relation to um, maybe a death or a bereavement that they're going through. So so they would be sort of my, my, my thoughts, uh, maybe a little bit unstructured, Refni, but to kind of give a sense as to the sort of perspective that I would have from a HR perspective. That's fantastic, Barry. Thanks very much for that. And again, we may come back to some more of those points in the question and answer section. Again, for all of you who are participants here, if you have a question around anything that Barry has raised or Jennifer, you know, again, please pop it into the uh, either the chat function or into the question and answer uh, section, and we'll uh, we'll gather those together. Sharon, I'm going to hand back to you now. Thanks very much to Jennifer and to Barry. And uh, Sharon's going to introduce uh, three speakers from here who are going to respond to uh, Jennifer and Barry. Great. Thank you, Brefney, and thank you, Barry, and and thank you, Maeve, and um, that bank of skills you talk about, Barry. I think it's it's so appropriate and um, um, ensuring managers of the confidence to deal with grief in the workplace. And what also the the course has said to me was how important it is the message, the kind words, the card from the manager. How important it is for the employee. And just to echo Maeve's words that, you know, humanity is honoured. Um, it, it's just a, such a lovely phrase, really, when it's done well in the workplace and when people bring their humanity into the workplace, it is both a win for the employee and for the employer. So thank you for you sharing, sharing your thoughts there. We were, of course, helped on our journey by lots of people and, and Brefni collaborates with quite a, a wide range of, of uh, um, 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 contacts in both the corporate and in the personal um, development world. So we've been joined today by three people who've given us particular help. So Joyce Rigby-Jones is from the, is a chartered CIPD. She's the honorary chair of the National Committee of CIPD. And for anybody who doesn't know, I have to remind myself, Joyce, it's the, uh, the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development. We all know CIPD and, and what it is. And she's also managing director of Voltage HR and Management Consultancy. So over to you, Joyce. Thanks so much, Sharon. And, you know, we're delighted in CIPD to be um, associated with this launch and the work that Brefni and all of your team have been doing on bereavement. Um, in CIPD, I suppose we're very conscious that HR professionals are often the first point of contact for any major crisis with employees. And they're involved in the pr practical difficulties of dealing with bereavement in the workplace. And unfortunately, with the added impact of COVID, this has made bereavement and grief a, a, quite a common issue, unfortunately, for all of us in the workplace and made it a, a very difficult situation for HR practitioners who are having to work with employees going through this. In CIPD, we, have, we offer guidance to HR professionals um, with guides that aim to address the issues in a holistic and a long-term approach. 
And uh, echoing on what Barry Holmes uh, mentioned that you know, this is part of a well-being solution for employers and HR is providing that through um, many different ways. But on the CIPD site, we offer templates for bereavement policies and guidance and it links in very nicely with the lovely training um, uh, modules that you've put together in this launch. And I would, uh, would echo Barry's um, sentiments that they're really lovely, they're short and sharp, they, they tell you the words that you need to express, which is so difficult at these times. And for HR practitioners, um, the CIPD website is open to anyone who wishes to look at our templates, at our advice. Um, we very much look at the flexibility, the empathy, and the critical issue of returning to work for employees after bereavement, because that is so pivotal in ensuring that the employee can get back to normal and feel that they're, they're being looked after well. The, the additional training that you're offering, we see it as a great strong support for our HR population. And uh, we thank you very much. And also leading up to um, the 18th of March, our, our exceptional bank holiday this year, um, that is specifically commemorating those lost during COVID. And what we're asking employers to do is think about their bereavement policies, maybe reintroduce it with, uh, with their employees, talk about it and have conversations uh, leading up to the 18th of March to really emphasize that recognition of what we've all been through actually over the last two years. So in CIPD, we're very much calling that out. And uh, I think this link with your uh, training and offering is, is really nice and will work very well. So thank you so much for inviting me on and hopefully I can answer other questions for you later on if, if necessary. Thank you very much, Joyce. And knowing we have the support of CIPD is really, really important because it just is such an avenue to dispense or to disperse the, the messages and, and to have it coming from HR gives an added support to in, employers and to managers as well. Next up is, is Maeve McLeary, who's a long-term friend of IHF, and she's a director of employee relations with IBEC. And prior to joining IBEC, Maeve, I understand you were working with the World Bank in Washington, DC. You're very welcome here this morning. Thank you very much, Sharon. Of course, that's a, a lifetime ago now. Um, delighted to be here this morning and thank you so much for the opportunity to collaborate with you on this. And I think as other contributors have said this morning, such an important part um, of everybody's day-to-day -day life. Um, and I think for ourselves, you know, in the workplace, employers are, are so often unsure of how to deal appropriately and effectively with some of these issues. Um, and how to support people who are grieving. So I think the development of these e-learning modules um, are a great resource for employers. Um, and certainly I think the inclusion of, you know, the case studies talking about lived experience, really important for, um, you know, how to learn to approach that whole area of grief within the workplace. So um, I think a, a fantastic resource overall. Um, the uh, your earlier contributor, Jennifer, Jennifer, actually what you talked about um, around that opportunity to be able to openly express the fact that, you know, people are grieving in the workplace and, and how that needs to happen for employers. I think, you know, it really helps to remove that isolation that people can feel when you've got something that's happening outside of the, the workplace and works really to include people and include the fact that, you know, we're, we're all um, in work, dealing with things that happen, whether they're in the workplace or whether they're outside of the workplace, we bring it with us. Um, and that ability then to be able to, as Jennifer so eloquently said, sort of move through that piece and, and go back to your day job with that renewed energy of the support that's behind you uh, because somebody understood and addressed it and helped you to move through it is really critically important in the workplace and uh, really does help to define uh, a workplace culture. So I think is hugely valuable. And one of the other pieces that I think, you know, from an employer's perspective, we see a big challenge. Unfortunately, as we all age, this is something that we become more familiar with um, addressing and how to manage that issue of grief because it, it comes to our door as our, our families and our, our parents age. But for younger managers who perhaps haven't had that experience in their own life yet, these e-learning modules, this ability to be able to have a language and a, a support around how to speak to people, how to address the issue. And, 
to really not be afraid of uh, speaking to these very difficult issues of grief in the workplace is so important. So delighted to collaborate with you today. It's a it's a hugely important resource. And um, as many of your other contributors have said this morning, uh, couldn't be more timely as we see more and more people return to something approaching what we saw as normal beforehand and yet bringing all of those experiences over the last two years. Thank you very much, Maeve. And I think as we return to the workplace and the, the new reality, that notion of culture and organisational culture and well-being is becoming so, so important. And a huge part of that culture and well-being is the employees themselves. And we've been lucky to be able to partner with, with uh, um, ICTU for many years. And I want to welcome David Joyce, who I've met many a times, who's the Equality Officer from the Irish Congress of Trade Unions. You're very welcome, David. Um, thank you very much, um... Sharon and to Brefni and all in the Irish Hospice Foundation, we're we're very happy to be collaborating with you over the years and, and to be here today at the launch of these really, really useful um, resources. Um, I, I think from, from the outset, I'd say that I think Joyce's um, linking with the 18th of March is fantastic. And I think it's, it's really an opportune time for all of us to begin to have, have this um, conversation as to how workplaces can support um, people experiencing um, grief. Um, I, um, I went through the uh, resource for, for staff, um, the, 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 the e-learning um, section for staff, and I have to say it was really, really um, useful. Um, I think as, as, as Barry said um, earlier, um, you know, people are often terrified to say the wrong thing and they just don't know how to approach the subject um, in, in the workplace. Um, you know, and, and, and the, the way, the very simple way that the, the modules break down, you know, what we mean by, um, you know, personal grief, professional grief, even the different types of workplace ranging from where it's not really an expected thing where it could be occasional or, you know, in some cases, um, such as hospices, for example, um, it, it's a very normal part of the working um, uh, environment. And of course, then the importance of creating a supportive workplace and environment um, to, to deal with the issue. And I think um, one of the key issues that I, I, I take from, from all of this, and, and as Sharon said at the start, if she learned from uh, going through the modules, you can imagine someone like me learned even 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 more. You know, not kind of coming in, in into this from from the outside. Um, but but the the fact that um, doing this kind of work contributes both to staff well being and also to the uh, to, to the running you know the, the the efficient running of the organisation, whatever it is they they do. And and um, I, I was struck by what Jennifer said in terms of, um, you know, how work like this can can boost morale and, and commitment from staff. And I, and I think, Jennifer, you called it a shot in the arm. And, and I think that, that that's a really nice um, e expression. And, 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 you know, being at work um, can, of course, be a, a help for someone experiencing um, grief, um, you know, the routine, et cetera. But it, I don't think it happens by accident. And I think having these kind of resources um, can help workplaces put the, the correct um, uh, you know, environment in, in, in place to deal with that. The personal um, stories in there are fantastic. Um, that, that they really help you kind of really get, get, get under the bonnet, if you like, of, of all of this. And Aoife's story of um, losing a baby and the exercise on how how you might respond was I found really really useful, particularly with the emphasis on you know engaging um, with Eva and, and listening to her experience, um, and then of course also noting that it's not something that um, disappears in the you know in the week or a few weeks after um, somebody experiences um, the, the loss, but it's something that. Um, you know, will we, we'll, we'll be a, 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 an issue for people for a considerable um, period of time. And of course, everybody deals with it in a, in a, in a different um, manner. Um, so, um, you know, learning that, you know, you have to acknowledge it, to validate um, 
people's feelings and, and support by by giving space to them is is really important. So look, I, I just wanted to say those few things. Um, I think um, the importance of um, you know every, every worker being supported in this way, um, you know, um, is is really uh, important and a, and a key part, as others have said, of staff well-being and and indeed mental well-being. And I think these resources provide us with the um, opportunity to ensure a kind of equal and fair approach in, in workplaces to, to the, the subject of, of grief. Um, and, and I congratulate um, uh, IHF on, on developing them. And I know there are some of my trade union colleagues on the call, and I would encourage all of you to, um, to, to use the resources, um, both um, in, in our role as employers ourselves, but also in terms of our our, our work in terms of having these conversations with um, employers um, as well. So look, well, well done, and, and thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to, to say a few words of support today. Thank you very much, David. And I think we've heard some lovely words there. And we really do hope that these modules will provide that really practical and, and, and as Barry said, the evidence-based approach to supporting staff wellbeing around grief. All I have to do now is, uh, before we go to the questions, is to thank my own team, and in particular thank Brefney McInnes, but all my own team that are here today helping out. And I know Lorraine and Susan and Grony have been putting up where you can access the courses. So just remember elearning.hospicefoundation.ie. You can get to them from the main hospice, hospice website as well, but the elearninghospicefoundation.ie is, is, is the direct route. And I want to thank Jennifer. I think, Jennifer, I take away your humanity is honoured. It'll, it'll be a, a phrase that will rest with me today. I want to thank Barry for your time, Joyce, um, um, Rigby Jones, Maeve McElwee and David Joyce for giving your insights and giving your perspectives. We're now going to move into, into questions and, and give an opportunity. They're up on the, the panel there and Orla will be, who's our head of brief and education, will be uh, feeding, feeding those questions in and pointing them to the panellists. But thank you, everybody. And now to clear it open, Brefney, I think we have a, I'm metaphorically cutting a ribbon here. The courses are now open for anybody to access. Thank you very much, everybody. That's great. Thank you very much, Sharon. And uh, invite Orla to come in here. And again, there. Uh, and any of you who are, are uh, uh, on the uh, launch here, again, if you have a question for any of us, for Joyce, for May, for myself, for Jennifer or Barry, I know Barry has to head off fairly quickly, so he might be zipping out the door. Um, Barry, thank you very much for your, for your time and for your help. But please do, if there's a question there or if there's something that isn't clear, uh, we'd be very happy to answer it. Orla, over to you. OK, thank you, Brefni. Um, and thank you, everyone. That, that was a, a a beautiful experience to be a part of because it's it's an unusual thing to be sitting here and, and looking at loss in the face and in particular David um, your interaction with the with the case studies and on that e-learning I think it showed that the power of them so thank you and um, I'm really pleased to say the sort of questions that are coming up on our little panel here are how do you get this what's the link and um, can I get the slides can I get the recording so you know a huge amount amount of enthusiasm um, and and I think it's 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 really great to see um, I, 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 I can make up a couple of questions if you would bear with me thank you um, because I'm very uh, you know we, 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 we look at statistics and one of them that we use a lot is that 80 people will die in Ireland today eight zero so that's 80 families and some they, they are people in work and um, they are people with grandparents and parents and sisters and brothers and children and um, so it's a it's it's a real feature of our day-to-day -day life and um, and I was struck by I suppose a commonality between um, both Joyce and Barry and David which was the idea of trying to ensure consistency and maybe a, a, a preemptive approach to accommodating this life experience in the workplace. Um, and I'm, yeah, I know you had just a very short amount of time at the uh, when you were talking. So if you wanted to maybe um, pull that apart a little bit in terms of, well, what what do you do or what might you advise others? I, I might start with with you, Joyce. Yes, of course, Orla. And I suppose I'm not only um, part of CIPD in Ireland, but I'm also an HR professional uh, running a consultancy. And we have uh, unfortunately come across um, bereavement in the workplace, both um, deaths of 
have family or friends and also unfortunately suicide so mm. we've had to learn as we go along uh, over the years <clears throat> how to deal with this and many of the big organizations have employee assistance programs and um, they might have policies but for SMEs in particular this is really difficult because they don't have the resources they don't have an HR director to turn to and what we're doing is supporting mostly those smaller organizations who literally pick up the phone and say, what do we do? We don't know what to do. And now we have, uh, with these lovely resources, um, something to refer them to. We have the CIPD policies that very much, as I said, look at the holistic view. And we're trying to encourage employers to, to do this preempted as opposed to have a, a, a tragedy or a crisis mm -hmm. when they start. Um, but they, they have a lot of resources, a lot of options now to look at this and to learn how to communicate with the employee because um, it is the way to communicate. It's the empathy, it's the flexibility of the organization to allow that employee the grieving space that they need. And as Brefni said, it, it changes with every single individual. And, you know, we know that from dealing with the issues and actually coping with these tragedies in the workplace. Um, and the immediate response, I think, is so important. It's not having any lag that, you know, that the HR um, person, the manager is picking up the phone and talking or meeting that person really quickly um, mm -hmm. because any lag is, is very difficult for the individual and it makes the initial conversation much more difficult. So all in all, I do feel that going forward, the HR professionals and my team in Voltage, by the way, will be much more equipped and have a real toolkit mm. of uh, support and resourcing that will help us manage in the best possible way. Yeah. Very important points there, Joyce. And as you said, the idea of scale, so the smaller organisations meet um, meet these issues less regularly and the need is very immediate when it, when it yeah. occurs. Um, David, Brefni, Maeve, was there anything that, that you wanted to add? Um, I think that there's, I, I might add, a, I've just seen a question coming mm -hmm. in there all around um, the, the, the intervention, intervention that, mm. that uh, Jennifer uh, received in her organization. That that was a four week uh, or sorry, four session intervention. It came about from their staff well-being uh, group. Being group had run a number of information sessions on in the workplace for their staff. And from that, uh, we ran one during COVID. Um, which is based on, if you like, the, the uh, Coping with Grief for Staff e-learning course that we've now launched. So it would have been the similar content to that. Following from that session, it became very obvious that people needed something more. And we designed a four session uh, intervention. Um, and that's what Jennifer would have been part of. And uh, as she said, it was offered out to a number of staff who were bereaved. And this, Jennifer, I think it was May, was it May 2021? Yeah, I think you're, sorry, Jennifer, you're <laughs> on mute there again. No? Okay. Apologies. Yeah. yeah. That's Sorry. okay. We can hear you now. Yeah. I think yeah. it was May yeah. 2021. So it would have been at the height of the second lockdown. And uh, I suppose what, what became very obvious was that the fact that people were working from home and were disconnected from the normal support that you might get in a workplace, that was an added factor. Um, and so that's what that intervention was. It grew yeah. out of if you like the awareness raising uh, e-learning courses, which we have today, uh, which we, we would have done before face to face, but it grew out of that idea of grief being part of staff well-being uh, and uh, regular events that were run around that. Uh, and I suppose what we realised there was that the people needed something more. I hope that explains um, uh, uh, what what uh, uh, the question was there around? The, yeah, and I think as well, I think was it a Friday morning? Um, yeah, it was Friday morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the timing does matter <laughs> somehow. Yeah. I, I think it was a good. I think that was a good morning to have it actually, because you know your week was sort of wrapping up. Yeah. As well. 
Yeah. And, and I suppose that's that's another thing, Jennifer, maybe for people to think about in terms of responding to, to employees who are rude, to ask people, you know, again, it might be that, look, if we're going to do something, what is a time that suits, what works for you? And I, I think what we've been saying here, and, and David was saying as well, it's opening up that conversation around uh, these difficult topics, mm -hmm. uh, having that, that kind of three steps of acknowledging, validating, supporting, when we acknowledge, when we validate, we can then open that conversation and it might be, do you know what, can we do something more or could we meet as a group or could we um, uh, uh, have something else that would be helpful? Um, and I think Joyce, you've mentioned this as well. And Maeve, it's about having and, and being able to have those conversations in our workplaces, particularly for managers who may be younger, who aren't used to this, who may find it uh, very daunting. Just another question coming in here. Um, is there a bereavement policy template available that could be used to adhere with best practice? Yeah. And um, Joyce, you may want to come in on this as well. One of the courses is developing a bereavement policy, and there is a number of templates in that course. So one of the e-learning courses is developing a bereavement policy for HR professionals. So that's the one I would recommend for that. Um, and, and I think, Joyce, you, you might you have also have yeah. some templates. And the CIPD website also has um, templates for HR professionals as well. So there's a, a range of options that people can look at to get the best that suits them the, the most. Yeah. What I would say there, and Sharon mentioned this, uh, that, that we've uh, just completed our own uh, update of our own bereavement policy. Um, there's actually a value in, in, in going through the process of consulting with staff around that. Mm. We went through a process over the last six, eight weeks, consulting with staff from different departments. And it's amazing what comes back in terms, in terms of, of raising, raising awareness of grief. Of grief. Um, and the, the different issues that might be important for different people. Why I say Why I that, say that the, the actual yeah. process of developing the policy is as important as the final product. Um, and, and I think that's really important. Uh, again, it ties in, Joyce, with what you're saying about having the conversations. A policy is just a policy. It's important to have, but it's really how it's applied. It's how it's implemented and how people feel that it's it's their policy and it's part of uh, of them and it's uh, something that they have had an input on and, and continue to have. Yeah, and I think, Brefney, the idea of using the 18th of March as a, a talking point, because bereavement policies are not something you're going to bring up in conversation very frequently, hopefully. And uh, the, the idea is that you can actually have that conversation and get the words to use with employees to say, listen, we have this policy. And because we're coming up to the 18th of March, where we're going to commemorate people who died during COVID and where we're all affected, it's a perfect opportunity to have that conversation and open it up with employees who may be still grieving after two years. And we, we need to take that into account as well. Yeah. Okay, I'm very conscious now of time and it looks like our questions have um, petered out. Um, I, I would like to just maybe draw your attention um, to a campaign we're running with the HSE um, on bereavement um, as a fact of life. Um, so you'll be, some of you may have noticed it in the national press that uh, there will be advertisements on the radio um, coming up through March. And really what we're trying to promote is natural conversations around grief and loss and to help people to to reach out so as employee employers you're reaching in but we also want to help bereaved people to to reach out um, so I suppose without further ado, I, I, I'm going to just thank in particular, Brefni, for all the work you've done on, on this excellent piece of work. Um, and as we said, uh, building on a programme that has a long historical route. Um, thank you to all the contributors, in particular you, Jennifer, who have given us language to talk about grief and loss. Um, and, and it has hit us all and we'll, we'll bring it with us. So thank you for, for sharing. Um, so goodbye, everyone, and be well. Um, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Brefty. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Again, thank you, Sean. Thanks to everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your time today.